North Korea has warned of a full-fledged confrontation with Washington, promising to conduct a rocket launch and a nuclear test targeting the U.S. The threats come a day after the U.N. Security Council expanded U.S.-backed sanctions against Pyongyang for its rocket launch in December. And for more on the story, I'm now joined live by political analyst uh, Niall Bowie. Niall, very nice to have you on the program. So how, how much of a threat does North Korea really pose to the U.S. and its allies? I don't believe, believe it possesses a very much of a threat to the United States. Uh, many military analysts have uh, commented on uh, the obsolete nature of most of North Korea's uh, uh, military hardware. Most of it is based on old Soviet designs. And although their, um, their long-range missile technology has improved in recent years, I don't think that they have the capability to uh, directly attack the United States from where they are. I think really the danger uh, is much greater for the people in South Korea. And uh, I think we have to do our best in this situation to look at the world through North Korea's eyes. You know, uh, during the Korean War, the United States killed about 4 million people and completely flattened uh, North Korea. And um, if we look at the resolution that was passed yesterday, for example, uh, I think they perceive this to be a message from the international community saying that you do not have the right to defend yourself. So uh, I think this is a part of the reason why they behave so belligerently. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we see, and as you say, UN resolutions have resulted only in provoking North Korea to fight back. So why is the US keeping pressing for more measures then? Aren't they just pushing well, Pyongyang into a corner? Exactly right. And I think uh, with Obama's pivot to Asia policy, certainly North Korea is going to provide a very convenient pretext for the United States to militarize uh, the South Korean uh, country even further. Uh, and I think, as well, we have to look at the position of uh, Beijing on this issue. Uh, we know that the leadership uh, transition, uh, Xi Jinping is coming into power shortly. Uh, and I think that that government wants uh, nothing but stability on the Korean Peninsula. They don't want a refugee crisis on their borders uh, or a military conflict, for that matter, on their borders. So I think um, if we look at the incoming Pilipuro uh, Standing Committee, uh, many of the people who are going to be in the Chinese government have had direct experience uh, studying in North Korea. So one would hope that the incoming administration in Beijing will be able to uh, convince the North Koreans to behave in a more coherent way. Right. And it looks like the U.S. is keen to challenge China's influence in Asia-Pacific and North Korea being Beijing's longtime ally. Does Washington want it to remain isolated? Yes, I certainly think so. And we see that with basically 60 years of uh, economic sanctions, which have done nothing for the country. You know, I was in Pyongyang last month and uh, I saw a propaganda banner that really stuck out to me. And it said, we will live in our own way. So they're a completely defiant country and they will oppose any country or international institution that will uh, uh, basically prevent them from uh, perpetuating the system that currently exists. Could the latest war words actually result in an actual incident? like violence, for example? Yeah, well, uh, Pentagon documents have pointed out that if war broke out in the Korean Peninsula, over a million people would die in the first 24 hours. So I think as we have uh, the new South Korean president, Park Kyung hye coming into power in February, I think she really has a, a new president to engage uh, North Korea. And it's, uh, the situation is pretty complicated because uh, the North Korean government attempted to assassinate her father, Park jung hee and actually did assassinate her mother. Uh, when she was a child. So there's a lot of bad blood between the North Korean ruling family and the incoming South Korean president. But one would hope that uh, she has a little bit of a sense and rationalism to abandon the hardline policies of Lee Min-bok that we've seen in the past five years and to reintroduce the sunshine policy. Because I think ultimately, in, at the end of the day, if uh, North Korea and South Korea normalize relations and, and begin to have a little bit of an economic exchange, inevitably North Korea will become more a more coherent actor. So we can only have hope that that is the direction that she will take. All right. Political analyst Niall Bowie, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you so much.